welcome one and all. I hope I'm going to say something that was worth you coming out on a lovely evening. Um, I am going to talk about vision as we age, but I chose the title purposefully because I really would like you to see this not as a short course in the ophthalmic diseases you and your friends and your family are having, but rather an opportunity to think about vision. What is our vision? What do we do with it? What does it mean to us? What can we substitute for it, perhaps? And then a little bit about the things that affect us, both normally as we age and then abnormally in disease states. So my first question was, what is vision and what does it actually do for us? And if you step back for a moment and think about what that is and ask people around a table, you will get as many different answers as there are people. But for most people, it's a very emotional sort of gut reaction answer. My vision is precious and I wouldn't want to lose it. So what is it that we're doing with it? Well, I went to the dictionary to see if I could find a definition. The Oxford Dictionary said it's the faculty or state of being able to see. That wasn't terribly enlightening. So I tried another dictionary and it was to perceive with the eyes. Well, well, that's a little bit closer, I guess. We're talking about eyes at that stage, but it still doesn't really tell us what seeing is. So I put it this way. I said that it's one of five senses, and yet for many people, it's often quite a predominant sense. And as we age, all of the senses are aging at roughly the same rate, thanks to Mother Nature, Father Time, and gravity. And so at the point at which your vision might not be quite what it was, your hearing may also not be quite what it was. Um, I shared an office in a corridor next to the ear, nose, and throat clinic when I was at Shaughnessy Hospital when I was still doing regular outpatient work. And there was an ear, nose, and throat surgeon in the next room, and I was in the eye room. And his patient clearly couldn't hear, and my patient could not see. And he was shouting his questions, and my patient in front of me was dutifully answering them. <laughs> so there are those options, and if you have to, have lose, to be losing more than one sense at a time, it can really be a struggle to try and get input from the world. So it's the input from the world, and the world about us, and our role and interaction in it, that really is what we rely on our senses for. In the case of vision, it's really rapid receipt processing and turnaround that allows you to react to information. And then I would dare say for lots of people, vision is also a source of pleasure. What so what are the components of vision? Um, I put them together in no particular order, but I put fine point discrimination. And I'll come back to that in a minute. That's probably the one that most people think of when they think of how good is their vision. And often the definitions seem to stop there. Color identification. If you look at a black and white picture or a color picture, the color overwhelms the senses. There's no question it plays a big role in what we see. Contrasts or shades of gray or contrast sensitivity. Object identification. Movement detection. Not just is there movement, but which direction is it going? <laughs> Tracking movement so that you actually pay attention and follow it. The field of view and your depth perception. And finally, some sort of gyroscope to allow you to do all of those things. So how does vision actually happen? There is a, a physical process of vision and a light gets focused by your cornea, maybe by your glasses, and then by the lens of the eye onto the retina. That initiates a chemical process in the rods and cones, and that chemical process is an ongoing one all day long while your eyes are taking pictures, if you like. Once that chemical process has happened, it sets up an electrical process that communicates within the layers of the eye and then along the nerve to the rest of the brain where there's further processing. And the little image down the bottom just gives you an idea of how much of the brain is actually involved in this. Um, the picture on the upper uh, right 
actually shows the process going from the eye to the layers of the retina. And the layers of the retina, most people have heard about rods and cones, but the electrical wiring starts right there and it links back and forth and gets processed in many different complex ways to establish what you're seeing. And then down at the bottom on the left side here, we have the projections going from the eye to the back, to the back part of the brain. So the eyeball is here, sitting sort of below the front top part of your brain. The nerves feed around here in a complicated way. They feed around your brainstem, which does some of the driving. And then it feeds information back into the back part of your brain, which is where a lot of the processing is done. So how can we test and measure vision? And what does that look like? Well, most people have seen eye charts. I will just remind you that the eye charts on the left-hand side are only good when they're used properly. And they are meant to measure how small uh, discrimination you can resolve before you can't see it anymore. You need to wear your appropriate spectacles. So if it's a distance task, you need your distance glasses on. And it has to be set up at the correct distance. So people will say, if I walk closer, I can see it. And that's true. And it changes what the level of vision is. So 20 over 20 vision means that at 20 feet away from an object, you can see what everyone else does at 20 feet. 20 over 200 vision means that at 20 feet, you can see what everybody else sees from 200 feet away. And 20 over 200 is the level at which people um, are considered to be, quote, legally blind, which is kind of a funny definition. And it doesn't really signify much, except you're, you're quite compromised. But it's with your glasses on. So I'm blind as a bat when I don't have my glasses on doesn't count. <laughs> um, the, the item on the far right is what's called an Amsler grid. And anybody who's being watched for problems in their macula will recognize this. With your reading glasses on, you watch the center spot. And all of those lines should be square. And if there's a disease in the center part of the retina, it starts splotching things out or making them distorted. The picture at the bottom is actually one of a near vision card with reading glasses again. And then the picture is of somebody actually measuring what we call confrontation visual fields to get an idea what peripheral vision looks like. What are the predictable general changes in health as we age? Slowed reflexes, decline in balance, and that's a multiple uh, combination thing, but it has to do both with the muscles and with the ability of your brain to know where horizontal is. Decreased muscle strength, slowing down in memory and thinking. So some slowing in learning. You're still able to learn, but it may take a little bit longer or more rehearsal. Specific disease-related changes can happen, like pain and physical limitations will change some of your normal function. And then, of course, there can be the layering on of loss of other senses. So those are some of the general things we expect of normal aging.